Hey folks, I'm Marcel. I'm on the road today, as you can see, but I'm checking in with the Pulse. Uh, my kids are at tennis camp, so I'm kind of chaperoning them every day and sort of watching over them. I had a little time and I wanted to respond to a lot of comments about NMN, about David Sinclair, about Brand Stanfield, uh, Matt Caberline, and others who have spoken out for and against NMN. Things certainly are coming to a head lately. And basically, I don't see any of the recent developments since Brad's video as any sort of sea change necessarily. The lines may have shifted a little bit between categories of people and they already have their stands on NMN either for, against, or neutral, or undecided. What's really happened is a more of an intensification of everybody's position. And I think ultimately this could be a good thing that the science community is continuing now to turn on David Sinclair. Hopefully the FDA will get some pressure and see some pressure and say, you know, is Metro Biotech worth defending? Is NMN worth defending? Or should we really back off on this? Because look at the firestorm that David Sinclair is in right now. Also, you have Andrew Huberman. I mentioned him recently, but what I didn't mention yet is the fact that he went on Joe Rogan and told people to write the FDA to defend NMN as a supplement to protest their decision. So there's a lot of pressure building in all camps. There are a lot of defenders of NMN. As a matter of fact, I think there are three camps when it comes to NMN. There are NMN defenders. And as I said, I think the recent developments can be good for NMN if you want NMN to remain a supplement. If you want it to become a drug, then things are looking probably less good based on the Sinclair news that was released recently. And a lot of it's old news, by the way, that's sort of been rehashed, which I found kind of one-dimensional for sure. Um, and I will get into some of the video, but I'm not going to discuss today specifically Brad's points because, again, I thought they were one-dimensional, and I don't think a tit-for-tat or me being one-dimensional and trying to pick apart his video exclusively is the right path to take. There is a lot of nuance. There are multiple points to be made. And I'll make points concerning some of the content in the video, but also in the broader scheme of things, because again, this is not a one trick pony. And I'll explain what I mean. The second group of people are the no position or no firm position, right? They don't really know if NMN's good or bad. They don't know where they specifically stand. And that position can grow or shrink based on what's been going on. And then the, the third crowd is the anti-NMN crowd or the skeptics. And we've been hearing from them. And they're going to be louder. They're going to beat the drum louder when uh, there's bad news for NMN or perceived as bad news. Again, I think the news is very good for NMN as a supplement. Now, here's some information I think you need to keep in mind that wasn't brought up in the recent video by Brad. Matt Caberline is very much on team rapamycin. That is his substance of choice. That is where he has put in a lot of effort and raised millions of dollars towards testing for anti-aging. Rapamycin recently performed poorly in a grant review for its dog study. Of all things, dogs, yes. The exact thing that David Seclair was attacked for is what they're trying to do with rapamycin. They're giving it to dogs and testing for age extension, for, for life extension for dogs. And it's not performing so well. In the meantime, NMN is performing glowingly for pets and uh, of all kinds. So you're giving people are giving NMN to cats, dogs. They're putting it in dog biscuits. Do not age is doing it. Others are doing it. And now apparently David Sinclair is getting in on the act. And this alone contains a healthy dose of irony because why should dogs be allowed to take NMN as a supplement, but humans should not be allowed? It's just silly. Are we supposed to eat dog treats to get our NMN now? Come on. It's it's really, it's getting crazy. We've seen NR people push back on NMN very heavily. Why? NR has done very poorly. It performed poorly in court when there was a court case where they sided with 
Elysium over Chromadex. Chromadex stock fell by 90%. NMN has been growing in market share. The free markets have voted for NMN, not just for dogs, but for humans as well. Over a million people taking NMN. Now you have rapamycin not performing well in its trials, and it's under threat to lose its grant money. Millions of dollars are at stake, and Matt Kimberline is the champion of this cause. So Ironically, he lashes out at David Seclair at the very time that he's losing funding for rapamycin. As we go, in almost all respects, NMN is looking better and better and better, and rapamycin less so, NR less so, niacin as a supplement for boosting NAD, not looking as rosy either right now. So it is kind of ironic looking at the situation that the inference is that NMN is snake oil because David Sinclair is a snake. And that is a leap too far. That doesn't make a lot of sense. If he's a snake oil salesman for NMN, what is Matt Kimberline for rapamycin, which again is not performing well in trials. The main point I want to make today is that resveratrol, NMN, niacin for that matter, all exist in our food supply. Attacking these supplements makes no sense. There is no doubt that they are nutritional molecules, that they are valuable members, contributors of our dietary family, if you will. The only question is how much you should be taking or ingesting of each of them. Should you ingest only from food or should you dietarily supplement with some of these ingredients? That's really the only points that you could possibly be making about molecules that exist so widely in the food supply. The same would go for vitamin D, vitamin C, et cetera, et cetera, omega-3. Where it gets tricky is when someone like David Seclair makes bombastic claims about life extension. And then, yes, you can get into a debate. But I think it has more to do with the fact that the drug industry or proponents of certain drugs that are trying to accomplish the same thing, they feel under threat by what is right now an easy to purchase dietary supplement. And I don't think the drug industry sits back and plots against natural foods and natural ingredients for healthy purposes, but by design, the structure of Big Pharma is set up in such a way that supplements, dietary supplements that can help people stay healthy, that is a threat to their business. That is a threat to their bottom line. So I don't think there's a cabal in a dark dungeon somewhere meeting and saying, hey, we have to stop NMN, we have to stop healthy ingredients. But unfortunately, Big Pharma benefits when people get sick. There needs to be a very watchful eye on that industry to make sure that they don't start to introduce illnesses and then have the cure ready to go. That is a big, big danger going forward. And it doesn't have to come from a Western, well-regulated pharmaceutical company for that to take place either. So we do have some dangers that are brewing out there. And I think it's worth noting, one of our best defenses against the recent outbreak of a worldwide pandemic were things like NAC and NMN and other natural ingredients. So some of the best defenses are these natural ingredients. So I'm not defending and nor do I want to defend David Sinclair from accusations that he's a snake oil salesman. I'm defending NMN. And like the billion dollar companies that are members of Team NMN that aren't even selling NMN yet, they're defending NMN because it represents natural ingredients. That's their industry. The people defending NMN are people like myself. I mentioned Andrew Huberman. There's over a thousand wellness clinics now offering NMN. It's huge in Japan. Matter of fact, when people in Asia pick up some of my videos about NMN, they are mystified. They're like, what are you talking about? You're never going to stop NMN. It's hugely popular and growing in China and Japan. The Asian world is paying no attention, zero, to the issues going on with David Sinclair and the FDA. They are oblivious to it and they don't care. They are consuming NMN in increasing quantities in Asia. So I appreciate those of you who have defended me 
defended NMN. Those of you that have also criticized me and asked your questions, I'm not going to lambaste you. There are plenty of people asking questions and there are plenty of skeptics out there. And this won't end anytime soon. There will be proponents, there will be opponents, and there will be people kind of in the middle. But when I wake up in the morning, what gets me going is knowing that I'm going to feel great at going on 60 years old this year, that I, that my viewers are happy. I read comments, great comments, great reports from people taking NMN that are doing well. This is just the latest chapter in a battle for your right to take NMN. And it's not going to end, unfortunately, anytime soon, but it's also really exciting. I think there's a lot of positive news yet to come for all of us, not just concerning NMN, but other longevity research and health research that's going on with the natural, with natural ingredients. I'll see you guys real soon.